Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank Congresswoman Custer for organizing this special order this evening and for bringing attention to such a critical issue. Also want to thank Congresswoman Clark for your story as well. Thank you so much for taking the time tonight. But most importantly, I want to thank both of you for sharing your stories and for having the courage, Congresswoman Custer, to share your personal story, which I think will give hope and strength to women and survivors across the country. Sexual assault is an epidemic that knows no boundaries. It's a crisis on our campuses that mandates the attention of every member of Congress. I was in college in the late 70s and the early 80s. And I know what happened back then is sadly still happening today. I know of a college gang rape that happened when I was in school. I know of men who would brag about taking turns on drunk or unconscious women who could not give consent. They were not in a position to give consent. We would hear about these experiences later when a survivor was brave, brave enough to confide in her friends about what happened on that night. But every time, without exception, she felt powerless with little hope that justice would be on her side if she reported the crime. That's because the rape culture is suffocating for women all across America. She knew then that they would ask her what she was wearing. Was she showing cleavage? Were her jeans too tight? She knew they would ask her how much she had to drink if she were asking for it because she had a few cocktails. And she knew that they would ask about her sexual history if she were promiscuous, if she egged him on. This is the rape culture that sexual assault survivors live through each and every day. All of these memories came rushing back to me when I learned about the brave survivor at Stanford University. She courageously shared her vivid, graphic, and horrifying story of what happened before and after she was raped. Now, I didn't say during because she was unconscious when she was raped behind Stanford University's dumpster. Mr. Speaker, I am sick. I am sick and tired about this epidemic while we have meaningful legislation that sits and dies in committee. Those of us here tonight strongly support this legislation that will reform the way sexual assaults are handled on our college campuses. But where's the movement? Where is the vote on this floor of this Congress. The silence and the inaction from Congress is deafening and appalling. For example, the Campus Accountability and Safety Act only has 34 co-sponsors. That's right, 34 co-sponsors out of 435 members of the U.S. House of Representatives. Just as troubling is the HALT Act, the HALT Campus Sexual Violence Act which has only one Republican co-sponsor. I repeat, one Republican co-sponsor. And why I bring that up is because rape is not a partisan issue. It does not have a label of Republican or Democrat on it. Rape victims are not Republicans. They are not Democrats. They are human beings, and they deserve better. At bare minimum, they deserve a hearing and a vote on this floor of Congress. And let me just say this. If women made up more than our measly 20% of Congress, if Congress truly reflected the makeup of America, where 50 plus percent of Americans are women, I guarantee that sexual assault wouldn't be a back burner issue. Because this has impacted all of us, our friends, our sisters, our daughters, they have lived this experience. As a woman in Congress, I will not stay silent. Because why be a Congresswoman, why be Congresswomen, if we can't help other women? And do so vigorously and boldly. I will not stay silent while one in five college women experiences sexual assault during her undergraduate years.
As a woman in Congress, I will not stay silent because every female staffer I work with knows of a woman who was raped in college. How many more college women will be raped before Congress will act? We are here tonight for Emily Doe, who was sexually assaulted behind that fraternity dumpster while she was unconscious. We are all here for all survivors because we see you, we hear you, we respect you. And as women members of Congress, we will amplify your voice until there is action. And let me be clear, we will not be silent until meaningful action is taken. We will continue to challenge the status quo so all survivors are given the adequate justice they deserve. With that, I yield back the balance of my time.